Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to look at the DJI Fly app for the Mini uh, Mavic Mini. You can pick this up from Google App Store in our uh, various places. You can go on the main website of DJI and get it there also for ISO and Android. Uh, my flight time I've had with this Mini, I've only had a couple of days, so I've literally only flew about 15 minutes. That's all I've done. So if I make a mistake in this uh, review, uh, setting up this the app, I uh, apologize for that, I've done my best. Uh, so I'm gonna put up a little bit of footage while we talk. So we're gonna look at, we're gonna go through all the settings, just so we know where everything is. It's quite in depth. Probably take us, I think it's 10, 15 minutes or something. But I'm gonna try and explain everything I know about this app itself i've been flying drones for a while uh, so i'm working it out i've never had a dji product before this is the first one i've had i've always made my own drones and uh, i've bought cheaper drones but i've never had anything which is like me more than about 500 pounds so you have to bear with me there so we're gonna start off and we'll jump straight into the app so back shall we So you need to be connected to the Mavic to get this done. So I'm just going to run over this as quick as I can. It's quite in depth and it deserves a video out of its own. So we're going to connect and as we connect it's going to bring up the controller and also bring up the quad. I've actually sat the quad on top of, on top of my PC. Just because there's fans on the top, I'm going to show you actually. So uh, I'll lift, lift it up. Sat on top of the PC there. You can see there's fans on the top and they have the blown cold air out. So what I'm going to do is just set this to the side. Something like, like that. Uh, it's, it's getting like a nice breeze over the top of it. Don't worry about... I'll point it up so you can see a bit of the screen. So don't worry about it. It's just to keep it cool, that's all guys. Or you could fly it, but I'm trying to do this here. So let's start off on the left hand side and work our way around in a circle. So in the top left hand corner, you've got the P mode, uh, which is position hold. Uh, it has a rate set for like a fairly decent 70 mile an hour, 50 mile an hour. Then you've got S mode, which is sport, which is a lot quicker. I think it's 30 maybe miles per hour. Uh, where would I use that? Want to catch something, get out there quick. Also, if it's windy and you've got to get back and you need a bit more power in the motors, you're going to have to switch to that. But you're going to use a lot more juice up. Then you've got the C mode for semi smooth. This is what you want every time you do If you want a good shot of like an area and you want to like, this footage is what you're after. That's what you want to be in. Then to the right, that says take off with caution, no GPS. But no GPS because I'm in the house. And it's sat on a computer, so I'm not going to get any signals yet. It might, in fact, it's got five, but not enough. And then moving down to the left hand side, you've got the take off button. If you touch that, it says auto take off. If you touch the center, it'll take off and crash into the ceiling, but I'm not going to do that, so we'll just get rid of that. Then we have the map at the bottom, followed by uh, the height and the distance in meters, also your speed in meters as you're going up or down and uh, the meters as you're going forward yeah the map if you touch that one tap it goes to that size if i touch it again it goes to that size yeah i'll zoom out a little bit so you can see da, 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 da. so that's where i'm at and if you notice there's a lot of these colored boxes and circles all over the place what that is, is different zones. As you can see, there's an airport just there. I'll zoom in. You should see the airport. Yeah. Uh, where I'm going to be flying is all up that way. Like in between the, the And maybe over the hills over here. But anyhow, so that's that. And if you want more confirmation, you've also got a little breakdown of what they are. You can turn them all off. And they'll all disappear 
if I can hit the right ones. Do you know what I mean? So that you've turned them all off. Obviously you want them on. I want them on because I want to know what's there. If you turn them off, I don't think you'll get a warning, but you might, I'm not sure. I've never really tested that out. I also have them all on anyway because I like to know what's around. So, uh, back to the camera. So that was pretty good. And if you tap the corner, it goes small again. We've got the distance in, in metres on just below that. And then at the centre, I don't know if you can see, if I move, I move the uh, quad, you can see there's a little at the bottom, right in the middle at the bottom, just where the controller is, there's a little circle with the radar. Uh, you won't actually see the other part of it until... Just trying to put that down there. You won't see the other part of it until you're flying but you'll see another little uh, symbol for the for the drone uh, which is really nice so you can orientate your antennas to the craft so you get a better signal and then from the top moving over you've got the battery indicator which is a green circle with a little red uh, so when it gets down so it's coming down from the left so it's going anti-clockwise round 81 percent and so on when it gets to the red part obviously that's when you're running out but what's more interesting, if you see there where it says zero, 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 once you start flying, that's going to change. If you tap it, it's going to show you time to when the return to home will kick in. So let's say it's 15 minutes before this kicks in, then 14 and 13. And then you've got one below that in the middle, it's got until forced landing. It's going to actually force it down and then totally battery depleted. Yeah. So you only keep an eye on them guys, it's really important. Then you've got your signal strength and your uh, satellite strength. No satellites, it's in red because there's no satellites, or not enough to uh, to record. And then we've got the camera. So I've got set at uh, 2.7k, 30 frames a second, but you can go down to 24. I've got 1080p where you can go up to 60 frames a second. I have it on 2.7 at 30 frames a second and you've also got your photo settings so you've got time shot and your quick shot ones which won't work until you're actually flying you got like droney and circle me and things like that uh, rocket all that type of things go back to the video so that that's pretty nice and then you've got your record button so i can record video and then you've got your album that's the one i've just recorded and recorded and you, will, you can see all your photos and your videos are going to be in there so you can watch them and download them to your phone if you want because remember they're on the craft on the quad and then as you move down straight down you've got the auto button so you can go to manual or auto yeah as you go to auto it's fixed but you can adjust the uh, ev settings and you can lock the ev settings as well with that button so if you set the EV to 2, or oh, let's go really like 3, <laughs> and then you can lock that, and it won't change. As you're flying around, it won't change. It'll stay like that, that compensation. So uh, just leave it like that, will do. And you go to auto. Again, go to manual, because that, that was an auto. You can change the ISO all the way 100 right up to 3200 should have uh, that let's go back down to inside here i can get away with more than 800 and then should have speed one eight thousandth down to one thirtieth should have speed yeah so pretty decent it's a lot of uh just ability in there you can leave it on auto if you want okay that's pretty nice then we can move to the very top right hand corner where you've got these three little dots tap on them that's going to come up with the safety you've got safety control camera transmission and about i'm going really quickly because i want to i don't want the drone to overheat safety you got uh maximum altitude yeah goes up to that but if you go over 120 in my country, you're going to get a warning like that. So now you sure? And I'm going to drop it down a little bit. Same for distance. I can go out to 
No limit of 5,000, I think it is. I always have it about there. Return to home altitude, really important. If there's a building which is 50 meters high, you're gonna to have to be well above that building because it'll go up over the building and then land safely. If the trees are only say, 30 meters or 20 meters or whatever you're at, then you, so whatever's around you, you want this a bit more. That's what I'm saying. Okay, you can update your home position if you do decide to move around and you move from like move 20 feet away, 30 feet away, and then you can reset your home position. You can also calibrate your compass and your IMU. Uh, I always calibrate my compass anyway, even though it doesn't need it and it flies perfectly good. I always calibrate it because magnetic fields do change, obviously, when you move 20 a mile, 10 mile down the road. Battery information that's going to give me. There's two cells in the in the uh, quad, so that's telling me them, tell whether you've got a bad one, a good one, or and how many times they've been charged, all them type of things. Uh, unlock geozone. So if you're flying somewhere where there's a physical wall, like a barrier, where if the quad will just stop, it won't go past it. And if you want to fly there, you're going to have to get permission. Uh, remote identification. Find my drone. This is really good. So, say you lose your drone, let's just go to that view, or that view. You lose your drone, you say you're rooting around for it, you can actually... There you go, so you can actually, as you get within a couple of metres, you can actually find it that way as well. That's excellent. <laughs> That's super good. Uh, and then we've got uh, advanced settings. If you uh, it's it's set to return to home once you lose a signal. I don't know why you'd want it to hover or descend. Leave it on not return to home, guys, because you want to come back. Uh, and then we've got control, flight modes. Pick what you want. We just tell that uh, units. You can change that. Gimbal. Follow me. Or FPV. In FPV, it's going to bank. The camera is going to tilt to the right when it goes to the right tilt to the left and follow me more that stays uh, like upright so you don't get that, that uh, feeling of it like an airplane as a bank's gonna keep it uh, central advanced gimbal settings so you can change the speed and pitch of the gimbal and the smoothness which is nice you can also calibrate your gimbal if it's out a little bit put it on a level surface and recalibrate that gimbal you can have your mode, I fly in mode 2, but you can fly in uh, mode 3, mode 1, or you can custom ones, whatever you feel like. But most people fly in mode 2. RC calibration, so you can calibrate the controller. Uh, there's a flight tutorial, I'm not going to really go into it, but it goes through some pre-flight checks. Perform a safety check before you fly. All that good stuff. How do I get back now? Okay, so you can do that, and then you've got your camera settings. So you've got your pixel size you can pick 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. It's 4, 4 by 3 is the standard size of the pixel, anyway, of the chip. Uh, but it's cropped down, so you get that 16 by 9. Storage, you can format your card, it tells you the size of your card. Advanced shooting features, you've got a histogram which you can put on. So as you move around, if I move that now, it should change. Instagram. There you go. It's changing because I'm moving the, the, the light. I'm not going to go into how a histogram works, but you can. There'll be videos on that if you want to. I don't bother having one of them on. Let's go with auto anyway because it's just a lot easier. I've got enough things to worry about. And then you've got your grids. You can have different grids on. There you can different grids. You can have them all on, or you can have one on. White balance auto or manual, it's up to you. Anti flicker, uh, auto, or you can, depending on what, try a different ones, see which works for you. Subtitles, cache, I have 16 gigabyte uh, cache, because it works better for our one. Transmission, so this transmission box, so this is quite interesting. This, it's so nice to be able to alter uh, your settings. So if you look at says channel mode, auto, or manual, and then you've got this scale here with decibels, yeah. Uh, your noise ratio and then on the right hand side where you've got like megahertz it goes to one kilometer and four kilometer so a lot of people get confused with this uh, 
right at the bottom where you see the channel I'm on 149 it's very low the green thing that's better so the lower the better not higher the better yeah so how that works is if you look to the scale where it says one kilometer and four, uh, four kilometer it would go, if you go at one kilometer and four eight kilometers would be right at the very bottom wouldn't it so it's, it's getting further out that way so you can see that um, I've got a strong signal so it's going to give me in theory that distance that's the way I'm perceiving it. I could be wrong, but I think I'm right. So higher up, I'm sorry, lower down the like uh, 90, minus 90, minus 80, minus, uh, minus 60 is west. 100 is the best. So you can see we've got 95 uh, dBm, which is going to give you a better noise reduction. So the red ones, like, like the red one there, the highest one on channel 6, that's really noisy, that channel. And um, by the way, from 1 to 13, they're all 2.4 gigahertz, and then 149 onwards to 165, they're 5 uh, gigahertz. Yeah, both Wi Fi, just different frequencies. The 2.4G is going to stretch out a bit further. So, if you're out in the countryside, you may want to, and it's all changed again now, you may want to go on 2.4 if you get a bit more range. Uh, in a town where it's a little bit more uh, closer ranges, you might want to go with 5.8. That depends on you, but you, at least you can see it. And it's changing because things are changing. Uh, sometimes it's getting busy, sometimes it's not. The channel I've been on has stayed put. So I would stay on this channel because it's going to give me good range uh, and video quality. Uh, but you have got the option, if you want to, uh, 2.4 gig, you go anywhere from 1 to 13. And then 149 to 165, that's 5G. Or 5 gigahertz, not 5G. Uh, so I just thought I'd cover that. And if you want to change it, you just got a manual. Hit the manual button. And then you can pick, like, I can pick that channel. Then if I click OK, it will need to be restarted. So you can't change it while it's flying. So wherever you're flying. So it might be worthwhile just having a little time to check out what's going to happen see that's just changed again so that's unstable it's getting busy then it's not getting busy could be various reasons but i'm going to stay back at one uh one five three i think i think one four nine i was on before but i'll stay away from that channel if you want but then you've got about your name uh uh firmware updates aircraft firmware app versions serial numbers of things uh and that's it guys that's pretty much it what we've covered don't think there's anything else uh for, it's, it's a nice little app it seems to work really good does everything i need to do one thing i forgot to mention i found out if you you've got your, gim, your gimbal wheel so you can move the gimbal up and down yeah up and down that's looking inside my computer so you can move that gimbal up and down but if you don't want to use that you can just hold on to the screen with your, like thumb touch the screen hold it you get a buzzing and you can move the gimbal really smoothly like that as well and i think it can move left and right so you can move the craft left and right as you're panning around look how smooth you can do it so you've got two options there guys anyway Hope you like this video. Uh, give us a like, give us a subscribe if you haven't already done that. Really appreciate it. Uh, and leave any comments below and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.